All right, guys, working on the Toyota today, and uh, I've tried this intro way too many times, so I'm just doing a TLDR. I took the radio out of my Jeep, and I'm putting it in the Toyota. But yeah, I took the radio out of my Jeep, and I'm putting it in the Toyota because it's my first step on hopefully getting a well-rounded, good-sounding audio setup in the Toy uh, Toyota. Because I'm one of the people that like having, like listening to music when I drive, and I like it sounding decent, you know, good, well-rounded. I'm not an audio snob. I'm not like, oh, this specific speaker with this specific makeup and, you know, these gold-plated, platinum-plated cables make it sound so much better. No, I'm not into all that. But I do like a decent, well-rounded audio setup. And, uh, like I said, the first step, putting a nice, modern, double-din radio with Android Auto in it. My next step is going to be putting door speakers in it so I can have some nice, decent six and a half door speakers and then I'm gonna get some decent um, dash speakers which are which have a full four inch woofer for the dash speaker and uh, their components so they got a separate tweeter and that's what I'm gonna go with so uh, and I might not even use that separate tweeter depending on how good the tweeters and the doors are but but anyway yeah here's the radio um, here's the harness Here's the uh, breakout harness for this radio because there's no nothing on the back of it really. I mean, there's no RCAs or anything on the back. There's a bunch of stuff on the back. But uh, something you might notice that's different about this harness, if you've looked, it has this extra four-pin harness. This extra four-pin harness was in the uh, extended cabs and in the forerunners because these are for the rear speakers. This is what I'm wiring up my door speakers to. My dash speakers run through these normal connections here. And the good thing about Metra is that they make a vehicle side pigtail. This is the radio side. They make a vehicle side pigtail harness, which is what I have here, which has both the main connector and the four pin connector. So when I get door speakers, I just put that little four, well, it's not even four cavity. It's like five, six cavity. But anyway, I can put the smaller connector into here and then run that out to my speakers. Now, I'm not going to go through everything on this harness. Uh, I built it last night. I had no you know, reason to video it or anything. I have two videos, both the install of the radio on my Yukon and the, this specific radio in my Jeep, which I go into more detail on how these wire up. Now, basically, it's literally color to color because, thankfully, the audio scene has uh, decided on standardization, which is uh, a lot better than, than the, uh, the PC scene with the uh, different types of RGB and different types of uh, different types of HDMI and display port. And then, oh, wait a minute, no, this, this HDMI is this new standard, but the standard says you don't have to have everything. So even though this is an HDMI 2.1, it doesn't have this function or this function. Uh, that's a whole nother rant. But anyway, so color to color, yellow to yellow, red to red, black to black, orange to orange. If there is an orange, orange is uh, uh, for uh, dimming, which a lot of modern radios don't even have the dimming function anymore. Um, then you have, you know, your audio, your white and white stripe, gray and gray stripe, the, all those, those, they all go color to color to the radio pigtail. The radio pigtail, because this is a DVD, you know, full touchscreen style radio, you have to have a parking brake input. Now, I have never done that because I've always used a bypass harness, or a bypass module, which is in here. <clears throat> the bypass module Use goes in right here, which is this uh, orange, not orange wire, this um, light green wire. This light green wire is for the parking brake. It uses that wire, the ground wire, and your remote turn on wire, which is the blue wire, or blue, blue or blue with white stripe, either or. And that makes the radio think that it's in park all the time so you're not locked out of any functions. <clears throat> Another thing I forgot to mention. These trucks don't have a power antenna or a power amplifier. So this, this, these blue wires for here, you don't need to wire up to the radio. 
So this amp turn wire only goes to the bypass module. This other wire, there's the pink wire, which is a speed input wire. You don't need that wire. The only time you're going to use that wire is if you have a newer vehicle that has speed input to the radio, which that'll uh, work better with the, the GPS on this thing because it is wireless. Uh, Android Auto, it will use this speed wire to, you know, more accurately get your speed. Also, this reverse input, I'm not going to use this right now, but I will extend this to under the dash because I want to be able to use that when I plug it up for cameras and such. Yeah, uh, that's a lot shorter of a video. Still a little long, but I can at least, you know, do that. Here's the uh, breakout harness, which I, th I think I already mentioned. This thing has stuff on the back, but it doesn't have any of your RCAs. Literally, the only, th only thing you're going to use off of this, if you have an aux, you know, aux input, you'll use that. The brown is the camera. One of these yellows is the uh, is an audio output to like a re or video output to like a rear screen. Another one is an audio input, which you can use for a front camera. <clears throat> then you got the subwoofer input, which I think is here. And then all these other RCAs don't go to anything for me anyway. These are preamp outputs for front and rear audio, and then uh, audio RCA output for like a rear screen. Okay. Alright, now that it's taken like an hour for this intro, because I restarted it multiple times, now we can start taking off the interior. So, first things first, you pretty much, you gotta take off this whole lower part, including this. So, to start off with, hush panel needs to come off. There's two screws up here. Once you do that, you can pull the whole hood latch assembly out the back and kind of bend it down and it'll come out. There is a 10 millimeter 10 millimeter bolt here. And then there's a screw here, 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 and here. Take those off and I'll be back. All right, got all the screws up. Like I said, that pushes back. Oops. And over and there's the two screw holes there which or right there right there and then this does kind of push in so do that kind of wriggle it out don't forget your speaker wires once you take this off there's like two a tab there I guess there's only one tab. That kind of goes underneath this little radius around over there. <clears throat> Take that. Put it there. And uh, next, it's time to take this off, but you got to do a little bit more before you do that. But this whole upper piece has like, it's supposed to have, there's tabs supposed to be all over that push it in. Oh, this is all cracked and broken. I have another one of these, but I haven't put it on yet because I'm still kind of taking out and uh, putting in and re removing the interior. But I do have another one that's not cracked and, you know, not all broken. And it's still, and it has the upper bezel. So this whole dash will be complete. I just haven't put that on yet. But to take this off, you have to come over here. Start removing all your pieces. Gotta come up over here. There's a bunch of different there's a bunch of different clips in here, both on the top and the bottom. As you pull it out, your AC switch, if you have AC, is gonna start coming out. Kind of nice to have two hands, so you don't want to break this. Okay, got my AC switch out. So now this should just pull directly out. It's kind of mine gets caught over here. Pull that out, and then if you had a clock, it'd be right there. The clock plugs in there, but. To get this upper piece off, once you got this lower panel off, there's two screws right, right here and right here that go up through the bottom. 
and then there's this screw right here and then when you pull it back you got to disconnect your flasher and your uh, dimmer for your gauge cluster <coughs> but other than that there's just a couple push tabs there's supposed to be a push tab here but again it's broken I think there's supposed to be another one like somewhere over here that one's actually still there uh, but yeah we're gonna go ahead and pop this off because that that's technically on here and that's supposed to be popped off this whole upper bezel with this upper surround is all supposed to be one piece but mine obviously is missing the upper surround but anyway all right now I would usually do this with two hands if this wasn't all broken but basically you would have to pull on this side because the tab that's there would, it's supposed to be a tab like here and it's supposed to be a tab here and here and that one's still there and there would be one here for this little piece right here and I think there might be another one somewhere right around here but basically I would do multiple hands but because this is already broken just kind of pull this right here pop this out because that's really my only tab that's holding it on if you have a tilt steering wheel, make sure your steering wheel is tilted all the way down. So you're going to come over here, disconnect your dimmer switch, which I really need to get a new dimmer switch because I tried to pull this out and it's just spinning a hub on the inside. It still works. Um, if your dimmer switch doesn't work, your headlights probably don't work. Or if your dimmer switch isn't plugged in, your headlights won't work. I do know that. Alright, got that out. Now you can take this, put it up. If this wasn't broken, I would not be this rough with it, but it's already broken. I already have a new one. So yeah, there's that. it for now for that's it for the driver's side now I gotta go to the passenger side and take this off all right which you're on the passenger side and you got the lower bezel a lower kick panel and the upper uh, gauge cluster bezel off move over here there's a 10 millimeter right here there is a screw right there there's a screw right there Screw right there, screw right there, and there's a farmer going down the street. But uh, once you do all that, once you take all those screws out, this just pops down. Be mindful of your speaker again. So I'm going to go ahead and remove all these, and I'll be back. All right, with all the screws out, there is a couple of uh, push tabs on this side that I'm not going to be able to show you, I don't think. Take the speaker terminals off. Yeah, there's a push tab that goes in right there. I think that's the only push tab. There's a some there's something right there, but it doesn't go into anything. Yeah, there's just one push tab right there. There's a little slot right there that's supposed to go into something, but that's all crushed. Um yeah. Got that, got that out. Now we can start working on taking the radios, actual radio surround out. But you should have one of these tabs on each side. I only have one. So pull this out. And this just pops straight off. I'm not going to do this because there is a push tab like right in the center. Right there. I'm going to need like two hands to shimmy this out, but once you do that, as far as this, I don't remember if this has any screws or not. I think it does. It might all be push tab. 
I'll come back in a second and tell you, but I'm going to go ahead and shimmy this out. Well, with the center console, it doesn't look like I can shimmy this out, but it doesn't look like there's any bolts. It looks like there's a push tab over here and another push tab over here. And this just comes, yep, this just comes straight down and out. Now I got some extra stuff down here I'm going to have to unplug. So I'll unplug that stuff real, actually, real quick. Yeah, I'll unplug this stuff real quick and then get back. Now you can remove the radio, which uh, there's a couple different things. Uh, if you have an aftermarket radio and you don't have these side brackets anymore, these factory radio side brackets, you're going to need, need to buy another set of them because this uses those for the uh, double den mount. But um, I think these are eights, but I don't think I tightened them that much. So I might be able to use. Ooh, now I'm going to have to go get an eight millimeter. Because these are, I forgot, these are kind of rounded out from the previous owner. So, yeah, I'm going to go get an 8 and pull these out. And the radio just pull straight out. And the radio comes out. Oops. Luckily, there's a lot of room underneath this radio for... There's a lot of room in this dash for radio stuff. Because I'm going to need it. So, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and uh, unplug this stuff, get this stuff out of the way, and we'll start putting the uh, double data in. <clears throat> All right, before I swap the radio over, uh, as you see, there's a little bit more stuff out. I took the two screws out here and took the vent out. I took the four screws around there. I took the gauge cluster out because I needed to change my microphone because the Kenwood mics and the... Uh, Pioneer mics are not compatible. That is the uh, one thing that I wish the audio ma audio manufacturers would agree on would be, you know, the mic input, which they may kind of sort of do it. The mic input for the Pioneer was a lot smaller um, than the Kenwood, but they're also different year ranges on when they came out, kind of, sort of. So, uh, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, so... What I did, I took the mic, ran it down there, and you run it behind here. You can see it right here. And then I have it running it right here along my audio uh, RCAs and stuff. Then it runs through here, comes up, kind of loops around this little wire holder right here, or at least what I call a wire holder. I, it actually is a wire holder because this harness goes through, goes behind it. I got both my RCAs, my uh, remote wire, and my speaker or uh, microphone going over there and it's ran back behind the this per portion wow then it's ran down from here back behind this part of the hvac box and it comes back behind it right there you can see him coming down there goes down this metal bracket i got a couple zip ties on it and then i have it ran up through it in here So, now that that's there, got, got it right here, it's still probably a little long, but I'll cross that bridge in a minute, I can uh, make it smaller if I need to, but yeah, there's the mic, now all I gotta do is take this harness out, which this is the harness that came with the truck, there was a newer Kenwood in here that I put in here, but this is the old harness from the old Kenwood, the old Kenwood didn't have Bluetooth or anything, so I put that other Kenwood in here so I'd have Bluetooth and stuff. But I need to cut this RCA, or cut this uh, remote wire, and then unplug this, and then I can plug my Pioneer stuff in here, and I can swap the harness over. All right, got my harness all in and all good. Got my remote wire tacked in. Got my reverse light, ex uh, reverse uh, extended over to here. So whenever I get a chance to do that, it's already over there. If I even put a camera on this thing, this thing's kind of small, so it's not like I need a camera. Small, short, so it's not, I don't really need a camera. But, uh, you know, it wouldn't be that bad to have. But, um, 
yeah anyway so time to change brackets over to the radio all right i didn't know how smoothly this was going to go over but this is actually really smart that's the uh the niceties of standardization because these radios these these trucks had the option of like mine it has a double stack two den opening but the earlier models only have a single den opening because mine has the double den opening when you put a single den aftermarket radio in this is the factory radio bracket and it lines up there's a dimple there and a dimple there and it lines up with a dim with dimples here which lines everything up perfectly. These are probably bolt holes, or at least that one's probably a bolt hole for the factory radio. That, you know, bolt to the factory doubled in radio. But when you bring this over here, I was like, okay, how's this going to line up? I guess I'll try to line it up with these lower holes here. Well, it doesn't move. That's because there's a hole there, 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 and there that line up with these four dimples. So it just swaps directly over. So it swaps up directly over and the holes line up. So that's actually really smart. So I'm going to go ahead and copy all my bolt these down and get it in the vehicle. All right, got both brackets on. Got the adapter pigtail on. Got the USB that I cannibalized from the Alpine system that I never opened. And had it plugged into USB 2 because these radios, USB 2 is... Android Auto, USB 1 is Apple CarPlay. So if you had a family or you had friends and stuff that y'all each had different phones and y'all listen to music, you need to have two USBs and you need to label them. This actually comes with a label uh, somewhere down there. There's a label, there's two labels. One says USB 1, Apple CarPlay. One says USB 2, Android Auto, and you just take it and wrap it around the end of it, end of the cables if you have both cables. But I don't own any Apple devices other than my old school iPod Touch, and I don't want to. I doubt and uh, Apple CarPlay is even supported on that. But yeah, so this just I'm not. I'm going to do this with two hands, but it goes into here, obviously, like you took the other one out, and there's two little tabs. And then line up there and there. Alright, fast forward some time. Went in, ate some food. Got out of the heat for a minute. Now I'm back outside and the wind's actually blowing decent. So it feels alright because the storm's coming in early in the morning slash tomorrow. Uh, but, got the radio in. One thing I forgot to do. For this specific radio, when this radio first came out, it was like one of the very first aftermarket radios that had wireless Android Auto built into it. And uh, CarPlay. And one of the things that this that was required of CarPlay at the time for uh, was you needed to have a GPS antenna to run CarPlay wirelessly. Um, I don't remember the stipulations. I think it was just based on maps. You couldn't do, you could maybe use it but not use maps. There was some caveat. Now, that wasn't the thing with Android Auto. I never put the GPS on my uh, uh, Jeep when I had it in my Jeep. And I never had a problem with uh, not being able to use maps and stuff. And I had the full functionality of Android Auto wirelessly. The only caveat was... Every time Android Auto started up, there'd be a big warning saying no GPS connected. Um, and I found that out because uh, I forgot, I found out that I forgot to put the GPS on there when I went and started, I was just messing with it. Uh, you know, connecting my phone to it, setting up my phone, getting wireless Android Auto set up, making sure all my settings were still there from for when it was in my Jeep. Because this is actually, it has some memory in it that you can save and load uh, presets. Even though it hasn't had a battery connected to it in years, you know, constantly, it seemed like it still held mo most of my settings. Um, but 
I went to Android Auto and it popped up with no GPS and I was like, dang it, I gotta take the radio back out and put the GPS in it, uh, on it because even though I don't need it for this, uh, you know, I don't want that warning. So what I did is I pulled off that pillar over there, snaked it back over here. It's just on the ground right now. I don't have it all tied up, but the GPS antenna is right there. I just double-sided taped it right there to the dash. Right there. I was going to put it on the driver's side, but I decided I have too much stuff running through that pillar on that side. Um, so I just took it off. The whole, the whole dash is like loose on this side because there's nothing else holding it down here. Uh, once you take the pillar, the lower piece off, but to get the whole thing off, you still have to take everything in the center stack off and disconnect a couple of bolts over there, then the whole thing will come off. Which I'll have to do that eventually. I got junk inside my HVAC box, um, just from this vehicle, from previous owners and sitting and stuff like that. But anyway, so I'm going to put this back on. I'm going to take all of my extra GPS wire, route it up to this uh, dash bar and uh, tie it, you know, tie it up and everything. All right, now that I put the GPS tenda back on, I can put this uh, centerpiece back on. So uh, I've got to do this uh, two hands because I got my uh, extra uh, cigarette lighter ports and my voltage meter plus USB to uh, connect back. All right, once I got that back on, I'm gonna go ahead and put this, uh, my glove box back in place. So I can, you know, get this bolted in down here. And then once I do that, I'll do the other side, get that side bolted in. Then I should be able to just push this straight on uh, and put the clips in it. All right. Now the glove box is back in. You can put the gauge cluster surround back in. I'm going to go ahead and do that. All right. Got the gauge cluster surround snapped back. Got my... Got that one screw in over there. Got the HVAC panel snapped back in. All my gate, all my lever covers and switch back on. Now the only thing I have left to do is put the dash panel uh, knee bolster back on, and then I can put that piece back on, snap that back in, put that one clip back in. I need to get the other clip, but do that later. Put this back on. <clears throat> Don't forget to put the. Uh, hood latch back in there, tighten everything up, and then I can uh, listen to it now. Alright, everything's all in, everything's all back together. There's radio, really nice. It's Android Auto. I will not go to the maps, but uh, yeah, everything's all back together. My, my steering was back on. So, uh, I haven't done anything with the EQ or anything. I think the EQ is still preset to what I had it set on my Jeep. Which is going to be different from this system because A, I got two speakers, two dash speakers, and I have a, only one ported 10 on like a 250 watt amp versus my Jeep, which I have, you know, four speakers and a, what is it, like a 12, 14, 13, 1400 watt amp with two old school kicker CDRs, 12 inch. So it's going to be different, but, um, for this particular song, anyway, it actually sounds decent. I'm probably going to have to go through and adjust it, uh, especially if I start playing rock, because the uh, the bass is really loud, and I don't have any type of bass knob. That's all I'm going to play. I don't know what the speaker did, uh, what the camera did. Um, yeah, I don't know what the camera did at all, but yeah, so, uh, and again, like before, this is kind of intermittent, the, the display, I think I said earlier, this, uh, the motor is intermittent, this is supposed to, you set it at a certain angle, uh, if you need to angle it, and when you turn the vehicle off, after the radio shuts down and goes through this little shutdown sequence, it sucks it back in. But then when you turn it back on, the radio goes through its startup sequence, and then it it juts it back out to whatever it was on when you turned it off. Uh, this used to do this in my Jeep because my Jeep was kind of lower. Uh, it was it was it wasn't like up here. It was like a little down here, so I had it angled up like one or two, and it, it did it all the time. But again, that truck's been sit that Jeep's been sitting for a long time. My Yukon, I think I keep flat. I might have it angled out a little bit, 
but uh, this in the Toyota it really does need to be angled up I have it angled up one right now that's not angled up at all it's fine but you also can't see the whole screen that you can see a little bit more you can see pretty much all the screen which you could see most of it before but having it angled makes it touching the buttons and touching the screen a lot easier than having it over here I would like to have it all the way out there that's actually pretty decent that's actually really good honestly that would be perfect having it all the way out there but uh, this starts getting over over my drink holders so Oh, oh, I'm gonna say it kind of, kind of jammed there for a minute. Um, so yeah, I don't know. You know, I don't, I don't know how long that motor mechanism is gonna work. Honestly, if it breaks and it stays angled out just a little bit, that's fine. Uh, yeah, it sucks. I can't take the take the display off because this has a removable display. Uh, for NFF purposes, uh, whatever that you know, there if they'll still hold radio at that point, um, or. Uh, you know, there's a, there's actually an SD card slot and a CD, uh, this, this is actually a disc, uh, radio. It's got an SD card slot and it's got a disc slot. And I don't know, I think one of my radios had like a reset button back there, but that'd be kind of an interesting spot to do a reset. Um, and there's also, was that another aux in or is that a service port? Oh, the, the auto the auto EQ. You can buy a mic with this radio and and put it in it and it, it auto EQs the whole thing. But anyway, that's it. Got a double end radio in here, so I'm I'm ready to put more speakers in here, better speakers in here, and also you know finish setting up the EQ, which the EQ is going to be something I'm going to be setting up you know throughout you know the week that i drive it i got my favorites on i got my eq where i can adjust that i got my speaker level which that's where i come in and turn the subwoofer down if i need to right there it's my fingertips but anyway i will talk to you later let's see if it actually goes in should go in yep goes in okay, finish shutting down see if it comes out It actually went out that time. Anyway, talk to you later. Bye.